Hey everyone, Noah Zerby here. This is one of a series of short videos looking at the instruments or tools of foreign policy. In this video, we'll introduce the basic framework for subsequent videos that consider the variety of ways that states seek to achieve their foreign policy goals. Glenn Kratz offers a definition of foreign policy that broadly captures the concept. He defines foreign policy as the goals that a state's officials seek to attain abroad, the values that give rise to those objectives, and the means or instruments used to pursue them. This definition implies that foreign policy is best understood as a generalized pattern of activity rather than a single event. It is purposive rather than accidental, and it also highlights the connection between domestic and foreign policy. Kretz argues that U.S. foreign policy in particular is driven by four broad concerns. A national security drive to protect the United States and its citizens, an economic motivation that focuses on maintaining access to key resources and markets, a broad strategic objective to preserve the existing balance of power and to maintain the U.S. position in the world, and a broad concern with protecting human rights and promoting democracy. It's important to note that these goals are often in tension or even in conflict, and determining the relative priority placed on each goal often depends on the specific issue or crisis at hand. The most notable and tragic example is the willingness to sacrifice support for democracy and human rights in order to maintain the balance of power, for example by supporting authoritarian regimes around the world during the Cold War. Nevertheless, I think the broad framework holds, and U.S. foreign policy is often driven by, or at a minimum, at least rhetorically justified by, recourse to one or more of these broad goals. But what tools are available for states to achieve these foreign policy goals, whatever those goals might be? Broadly speaking, we can identify three sets of tools or policy options available for decision makers in the arena of foreign policy. Mo most specific actions will fall into one of these groups, and we can place these actions along a spectrum of violence or coerciveness. The first is diplomacy. States can engage in negotiations with one another in order to explain national goals and priorities, to develop shared understandings, or to achieve common goals together. Because it's generally focused on voluntary negotiations, diplomacy is the least coercive or the least violent tool available to states to achieve their goals. States can also rely on a variety of economic tools to achieve their goals. Some economic tools, like offering foreign aid or extending preferential trade relations in exchange for concessions from another state, are relatively non-coercive and in many ways are closer to diplomacy. Others, like imposing sanctions or embargoes, are more coercive. Thus, we place economic tools at the middle of the spectrum here. And finally, states can also rely on a variety of military options. Again, these can exist on a continuum from mutual security agreements or blockades, which rely mostly on the threat of military force, but not necessarily its use, all the way to the direct use of military force in a variety of forms, which is perhaps the most coercive instrument of foreign policy. We'll consider each of these sets of options in subsequent videos, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.